Hi, Dipesh. So good to have you today on the inaugural Marketing Society of Kenya's podcast. I'm glad you agreed to be my guest. Uh, we're going to have some fun today, right? Thanks, Valera. Of course. Okay. We will. Fine. So today I'm wearing um, Tusca Milele shoes, sneakers, very comfortable, from Ender Sportswear. And I understand you had something to do with this design. Tell us about that. <laughs> Part of the thinking was not just when we think of a campaign is not about what will be the TVC or what will be the print communication or what will right. be the radio spot. It's about also using various elements to drive the campaign message. Yes. And 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 for a brand that is that is saying Kenya Milele, yes. you have to be Kenyan in everything that you do. Correct. So, um, you know, when we spoke as a team, we said that um, we look at giveaways and items like the T-shirt that you're wearing or the caps. Yeah. But can we do something a little more meaningful in a giveaway yeah. that speaks about our intention so as a brand? So more than the T-shirts, more than exactly. the hats. Yes. So, so what you're looking at is, you know, like very cool kicks. But, yes. but what the thought behind it is about, this is a Kenyan brand yes. that is trying to create world-class products. So can we use design and the brand philosophy to promote our thinking as being Kenyan? And, and that's what I think reflects in the shoe, which gives you a sense of pride. So there are two things that happen to you when you wear great design. Yeah. You love its form yeah. and you love its intent. Yeah. And I think that pride that you have, that you, you sit and you wear it, yeah. and this is, this is me as a Kenyan, yes. and that is the intent. And that's the beauty of design and communication working together. Yeah, definitely feel the pride. In fact, when I posted a picture of myself in the shoes uh, with our head of beer, AJ, and got bombarded by Kenyan <laughs> saying, we want these shoes. It was so beautiful, yeah. the, the, the feedback, the fact that, yeah, great design, truly Kenyan. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I wish more brands would be more bold and brave. So like, as we're talking about progressive portrayal, which brands or which organizations need to be challenged on this? And, and challenge because I know we have, we all have unconscious biases. Mm -hmm. So we do stereotype. Yeah. Um, and uh, and if there, there are four areas we look at as EABL when, you know, in terms of unstereotyping, we've talked about representation a lot today, who's being portrayed in the creative, in the campaign. Uh, we talk about how do people interact and behave mm -hmm. um, actually in the, in the film that you're making or the content that you're doing. Um, the perspective, whose point of view is it told from? And again, like you said, both genders or from an ethnic point of view or Absolutely. an ageism point of view. And then characterization, are the people well-rounded and actually real? So who do you think needs to be challenged? You don't have to name particular brands, <laughs> but what have you seen out there that really needs to be challenged around these um, themes? I think uh, in in most of these situations, it is that you have to look at two things. One is the absolute low-hanging fruits, mm -hmm. where, I mean, certain categories are driven by certain genders being portrayed in a certain manner. Yeah. yeah. So I think... Uh, like which categories? Um, <laughs> I think I'd still like to have my clients tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so. Don't say the brand, just say the category. So, see, categories, I think that, that's what I'm saying, low-hanging fruits. Uh -huh. Categories like detergents. Yeah. And then the flip side of it, categories like engine oils. Right. You see, it's a category like finance. Yeah. You know, so it's almost sort of um, uh, people are trying to make inways and inroads into into these categories. But, you know, like, for example, f let's take a typical category, but mm -hmm. where you see subconscious bias mm -hmm. is finances. So the whole sector of finance seems to be driven by men. Right. Do You see, when you say it's businessmen. Yeah. It is SME owners. You know, like when we think of an SME owner, I ask you to close your eyes, you'll describe a man. Yeah. But whereas statistically in India, uh, sorry, in uh, in Kenya, 60% um, of M stroke SME owners mm -hmm. are women. That's the power of SME uh, of women in this sector in Kenya. Right. But you see, it's you never see it. Right. If I ask you to go around and drive back home and see a billboard, mm -hmm. uh, you'll only see a mom and poker. Mm. You see, that's the image mm. that I think the category sort of owes it to itself mm. to correct. Correct. And and there are brands. Um, it would be biased to take a name of few brands, but mm. there are brands that we are working with in the financial sector that mm. are absolutely cognizant of this 
and they are going out and making that change yeah so the i mean the ones that remain are um, household cleaning products yeah i think they really need to look at the category because um positive gender portrayal is also uh, the i mean if you skew it towards women it seems about not putting women in the ad mm. that's not the point it mm. is about re-looking at the role of what men have in a household yeah and and when you said that what is our role as communicators and advertisers like we spoke about earlier what we do makes it socially acceptable yeah for people to do at home yeah it's a huge impact it's a huge impact yeah so you know like if somebody like a woman turns around and tells her husband osha viombo it's not a punishment yeah exactly it's give me a hand yes in in the in the household chores yes so it's not seen as derogatory yes and that is our sort of uh, responsibility yeah also i mean if you think about you know uh professional white collar mm. uh, workers women mm. um you know personally i have no issue with going home and making dinner yeah yeah uh, i might not want to wash the dishes cuz i'll mess my nails but <laughs> <laughs> i will have no issue with that but do i see myself represented represented in communication where i am a professional white collar and i go home and i'm still you know taking care of the family um uh, my husband's also supporting me with that mm-hmm. do we see that you know consistently that part is yeah. is something that we really need to sort of take cognizance as as both marketers and communicators yeah and challenge ourselves yeah is that you know we've got the we've got the communication right but are the are the nuances that we are building into the communication communicating the right things too yeah uh, and as a brand we need to think about what do we think of the people who actually buy our brands absolutely you know? yeah so we actually you know think about the the consumer and and the consumer behavior which is not linear it's there's so many you know different things that go into it so we're talking about you know breaking stereotypes um how does this work out is there a balance to it you know what should we be thinking about as marketers now this is the beauty about uh, advertising that i think almost all marketers know mm-hmm. and communication people swear by is that uh, yes there is a broad structure to to creating that balance mm-hmm. but at the end of the day there is a bit of science behind it but there is this little fine art yeah. of finding that balance yes and and that is why i'm glad our jobs will never be replaced by ai uh, because you, it's you, science you, and art absolutely. absolutely i will never be an app <laughs> So, so uh, I am not an app away from extinction. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so I think uh uh so what happens is when people talk about unserotyping finding the right gender portrayal is that there is there is correction and there is overcorrection. Okay? And when you overcorrect you you fall into the trap the same it's like you close the loop and go back to where you started from. Give us an example of that. Um so okay let me talk in broad senses not in specifics is okay. that uh, um because you know people have very long memories <laughs> and and so do brands so um uh, so what happens is that when you go out in a piece of communication to say that let me change the portrayal of one person mm-hmm. and you say that let's diminish the role of the other person in, in as a gender mm. so what you've done is reverse yeah. the loop yeah and and sometimes as communication partners you can you can sort of guide your client and say that you know there is an instinct in me that is saying is that when you change these two critical words in this dialogue yeah it diminishes the role yeah. of the other person or if you reduce this part in the script this is what happens yeah. because the net take out is going to be like the person does not have a role yeah and we've seen this happen okay because this is the learning this is the evolution curve for a lot of things and you 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 err on the side of just going wrong and we've had a time where we had to sort of re-edit something mm-hmm. and reshoot certain bits to get that balance right okay and and this is something that that is that is intuitive mm-hmm. uh and i think both uh partners have to be on the table and very conscious about what they're doing so give me a hypothetical example of how that played out like what what did that look like what is the role that you you know yeah. got it wrong yeah. and then had to go back and change classically mm. in most um men's products mm-hmm. uh like deodorants mm-hmm. women were objectified 
Yes. And kept as props. Right. So in household products, yeah. uh, the men were seen irrelevant and right. therefore treated as props. Okay. And the more you dial up the role of a person being all achieving, mm -hmm. you're dialing down and driving the, you know, the point that the male role is actually minimal. Mm. What you should do is partnerships. Okay. Not sort of over celebrate a person's role in doing something. But you're talking about partnerships. You know, we're African culture and, you know, somebody would argue, you know, in the household, there's no partnership. You know, this is a woman's role, this is a men's role. Absolutely. I think it's, it's a very interesting phase for even in every society. It mm. goes through that phase. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in my history of, of uh, you know, like 15 years in, in India, uh -huh. in advertising, and we were a very orthodox society. Okay. And and I think what we face in Africa is exactly what we faced back in India. Okay. And that is why the culture sort of match somehow is because it is it's patriarchal. Yeah. And therefore it is reflected in the advertising. Yes. But there has been a stage where, you know, today the society is changing. Yeah. Same here in Kenya. You know, you have the urban culture which has accepted a lot of things. Yeah. But men are actually hiding behind the system that allows them to do not. Uh, uh, not do a lot of things. Yeah. And therefore, our role is to keep challenging that. Yeah. And the more we challenge that and into more mainstream brands that we challenge that. Yeah. Uh, is we'll be able to affect that change. Yeah. And therefore, when you ask me the categories that should go first is the low-hanging fruits. Absolutely. Because once those that category sees the role of men change, then the niche categories, um, I mean, their job will be done. Yeah. So... I'd love to see a, a research study on the effect of the pandemic on the role of the the, the man in the household because men were homo. Actually, in my house, it has changed completely. I used to be one holding the mop. Now I am the mop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even just speaking about culture, you know, uh, in Kenya, we have this... this uh, culture of memes you know memes come out and, yeah. and i love it uh, kenyans are so creative yeah any small you know news uh, you know p whatever so party popular after party yeah what, what do you think is the role of memes in you know in in communication and marketing i'll tell you the um is you know advertising is very subjective yes. and every creative has a point of view disclaimer <laughs> so um but largely uh, what most brands do and their association with memes is to be in a place where your content is so popular that it is memed. Mm. But never use meme as a as medium to promote your content. Okay. okay. So, okay. you know... The, Good advice. The, yeah. I think that's that's the thing. You know, most of my guys, when they come back and they say that, you know, I have an idea for social, but we should use this meme. Mm. So my pushback is, no, create it's such good, good content that it, that it becomes a meme. I like that. Yeah. Love that. Okay. Um, and just to end off, who would you say, you know, is a CMO or marketing director globally or locally that you respect greatly and why? So let me start with somebody who influenced uh, uh, my career. Uh -huh. And that was back in India. Um, he's, uh, I mean, you won't know him, but he's he's in Nestle now. He sits in Switzerland. His name is Chandra Shekran. He's Chandra, we used to call him. Okay. Uh, why he's shaped my career is that... Um, you know, we used to work on a very tough brand in India called Airtel. Okay. At a very young age, um, uh, I started heading the, the creative that okay. was responsible for the entire brand. And that's the brand that actually brought me to Africa. Okay. So so when we sat there, and, and, and television used to be a very large medium. Right. For communication. And yeah. each of the stories that we told, because we were speaking to mass audiences, had to really resonate. Yeah. Be earthy and 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 craft themselves to a point where you know you're hammering home a message in every second of that commercial yeah. you know the you know the the coding in a commercial yeah uh, when you talk about where is the house mm -hmm. what is that woman wearing okay. why is the child saying what they're saying okay it is it is not just about an art it is about it being respecting both art mm -hmm. and still being very powerful in its communication i think okay. Uh, I think that man had that sense. Some people have a great understanding of medium. And he was the only non-creative person in my life that I would listen to as an advice on what the script was. Because he had the ability to pick up a dialogue and say, remove that word. 
Okay. And it did not come from a bias of saying I don't like it. Okay. It came from a point of saying what will it really mean to a woman watching that commercial. Wow. So there is that's craft and it and is. I think I think that's why I respect not just him but yeah. a lot of marketers who truly understand craft. Okay. And and while a lot of marketers I'll say this today feel that craft is somebody else's responsibility what it does in communication with advertising is that you know we don't create off the shelf products yeah we are bespoke yeah. every piece of communication is true to both the creator of the communication and the buyer of the communication and when they work together is you'll find you'll create something that is perfect yeah and and that is one CMO I respect a lot um Kenya actually I have I have worked with almost every category that I have worked with. <laughs> I have found um people who are very encouraging mm-hmm. and willing to challenge the boundaries in their own. So let's start with Tusker. Mm-hmm. I mean AJ and team. Right. Uh we wouldn't be where we were if they didn't give us the canvas to do the things. Yeah. and it's very important for a marketer to have that absolute faith in the team that they work with yeah and say this go out and create yeah so aj gvt gene mutula yes. all of these guys so yes. it's not just the heads of yes. and cmos it's the entire team needs to come together yes to understand the concept and sell it yeah let's go back to the issue of of craft um what would be advice to a young upcoming marketer in terms of honing that skill is it a skill that's learned is it you know innate how, what what's your advice you know i have been speaking to msk i my other uh, my other hat is the vice chair of msk yes you are the vice chair of msk and yeah. i also sit on the msk council so you are my vice chair much yeah. respect <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, you know the other conversation that i had with msk was um which i find we should we should do a lot is train the young marketers into the craft of communication okay because like i said communication is not an off the shelf product Correct. you don't walk into an agency and walk into ILB 9B <laughs> and say that that one in 500 grams right. there's no SKU yes it is crafted for you yes. and and sometimes yes as creative people it's it's difficult for us to admit but there are times when you are switching so many hats on that particular craft we like getting pushed back okay and the push back is not about saying no the push back is about engagement hey this radio spot the second line can it be a little bit more funny right as opposed to saying i don't like it right you know i don't like so it even cannot even how you give how the client gives back feedback yeah craft is pushing into craft teaches mm. you to it sharpen your feedback okay it leads you to sharpen the product so so this yeah, is i think there's, there's a, a huge issue in how we as marketers give feedback to creatives absolutely yeah um and and i think it it even dwells on you know what does that do for the creative from a, even a mental health space they've worked on this and then come i don't like it exactly no there is yeah there's the other thing as feedback and a, a lot of times you know being straight forward mm-hmm. or saying that i'm being blunt mm. is not the most constructive way mm. because you're rejecting something Right. You know and 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 communication and brands are not in an accepting rejection relationship. Yeah. It, it's it's how I like that. It's not exception uh, accepting or rejecting, yeah. Uh, it 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 can make any relationship go wrong. Yeah. It does not bring the best foot forward in anyone. I mean, you can start with your 5-year-old at home. You cannot just turn around and say I don't like it. Yeah. You will have to say can you use the color black instead of blue? for hair because probably that's the color of hair that papa has yes. <laughs> not blue yes. so so it's it's the same thing with communication partners and i think um, uh, a, a, a lot is the dynamics of the industry today okay where we have reached where it has become very transactional yeah you know um i'm sorry i'm a little dinosaur i've been in the industry for about 27 years but it came do not from... apologize <laughs> <laughs> you, no no great experience yeah so uh, you know there was a time in advertising where brand books mm-hmm. were guarded in agencies mm-hmm. and they were passed on from brand owner to brand owner okay because the guard book in the agency was far more valuable uh, valuable for its resource for the brand than the brand owner in the in the 
in the marketing uh, seat. Okay. Because they would refer to it to see the history of the brand and the agencies were the caretakers of it. Correct. But the current dynamics have changed it completely into a transactional relationship and therefore the engagement of the agencies are becoming for very short term purposes. Okay. And therefore if you see coming back to feedback mm -hmm. is that you're approaching it from a very sort of sometimes uh, a here and now decision. Okay. And the agency may be coming from it from a lineage Right. And therefore, what the brand needs to do. Yeah. So it cannot be complete disregard for everything. So it has to currently go back into that space where it is a little bit more collaborative. Therefore, marketers, back to your original question. Yeah. Feedback, creativity, craft. Mm. It's it's the onus of your communication partner, but it is your responsibility to be as involved yeah. in that process. Yeah. It's it's like. It's co-creation these days. It's no longer Absolutely. Yeah, I briefed you, I walked away, it's, I come It's back. a rally. Yeah. There is there's a driver, yeah. there's a navigator. Absolutely. It one goes wrong. Yeah. You're in the ditch. Correct. Great. Any parting shots, Dipesh? I was hoping there would be two on the table, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, next time we're in the studio. So Okay. Thank Done. you so much, Dipesh. It's been great great conversation i've learned quite a bit as well no i've learned a lot today too yeah <laughs> awesome thank you all right thank you Vera.